Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Dr. Arya's Vlogs. Today, I am going to discuss various theories or philosophies of impression making. In the previous lecture, we have discussed various classification of impressions in detail. You can watch that video. So, today we are going to discuss various theories. So, coming to the theories of impression making, there are mainly five theories. They are mucostatic, mucocompressive, selective pressure, myostatic and dynamic theories. Okay. So, these are the various theories of impression making. So, coming to the mucostatic theory. This theory was proposed by Richardson and it was popularized by Henry Page in 1938. According to this theory, the oral mucosa is recorded in a resting state. So, it is recorded in the resting state and the impression is made in an oversized impression tray with spacer. So, here the spacer is used and border molding is not performed. So, the flanges are sh uh, shorter than the other techniques and here the material used for the impression is that the impression plaster. It is a material of choice for use. Okay. For this technique. And it is best termed as minimal pressure impression as it is impossible to record the mucosa with no pressure. Okay. And this technique involves, as we already said, use of an oversized impression tray. Because there is at least 3 to 5 mm space between the tissue and trays needed. And with the low viscosity impression material. So here, Mucostatic technique uses low viscosity impression materials and the various low viscosity mucostatic impression materials include agar, zinc oxide eugenol, impression plaster, low viscosity alginate, all light body elastomers and impression wax. And the impression material of choice for used in uh, mucostatic technique is that impression plaster. Okay. And this technique does not involve physiological border molding. And so it depends only on the retention from endofacial surface tension. So these are all about the mucostatic theory. Coming to a diagram showing mucostatic theory. So this is the diagram showing mucostatic technique. Here there is no pressure applied on the tissues during impression making. That is very important. There is no pressure applied on the tissues. Okay. And the advantages are excellent retention due to closed mucosal adaptation, less trauma to the tissue, decrease the chance of residual dirt resorption. And the disadvantage is that poor stability during occlusal lock. And there is a chance for the rocking of the dentures due to difference in sponginess of the mucosa. So these are all about the mucostatic technique. Okay. So, coming to the next theory that is mucocompressive theory. It was put forward by uh, Carol Johns and according to this theory, the tissues are recorded under pressure. So, here the technique compresses the denture bearing tissues during impression making. So, here the denture bearing tissues can be compressed according to this technique. And here by recording the tissues in a compressed state, they would withstand functional forces which compress the tissues better. And the closed mouth functional technique also produces mucocompressive impressions. And the various the viscoelastic impression materials can be used to make mucocompressive impression are impression compound, medium body elastomers, heavy body elastomers and putty elastomers. Okay. So this is the diagram showing mucocompressive technique. Here the whole denture bearing surface is compressed during the impression making this. Uh, here the arrow mark is shown in the picture. So here the whole the whole tensor bearing surface is compressed during impression making. Okay. And what is uh, the advantage? That is the dentures are more stable because the tissues are compressed and the impression is able to record under uh, the underlying bone contour. And this provides better denture stability. So better denture stability is main advantage for the mucocompressive tear. And the disadvantages are tissue rebound will cause the denture to raise at rest. Okay. At rest condition, the tissue will 
rebound and the, uh, the retention is compromised due to tissue rebound and the residual resorption is increased due to pressure on the tissues. Okay, due to pressure uh, applied to the tissues, residual rigid resorption is increased. So, that is the disadvantage. So, that is all about the mucocompressive theory. Okay. So, coming to the selective pressure theory, it, is, it was put forward by Boucher. And this philosophy was proposed by Boucher. And he combined the merits of mucostatic and mucocompressive theories. And based on anatomical landmarks and the histology of supporting tissues, Boucher designed special impression trays to produce a selective impression, selective pressure impression. Okay. So here it combines the principles of both pressure and minimal pressure techniques. And the pressure is applied selectively on areas capable of resisting stress, that is stress bearing areas, and reduced from areas capable of incapable of tolerating stress, that is relief areas. So, here the pressure is applied selectively on some areas. Okay. So, if it is applied to the stress bearing areas and it is relieved from the relief areas. Okay. And this is achieved through the design of the custom tray where non-stress bearing or relief areas are relieved and the stress bearing areas contact the tray. And the technique combines the principles of maximum coverage within physiologic limits with intimate contact on the movable Loosely attached peripheral tissues and light pressure on the weak tissues. So that is about the selective pressure theory by Boucher. So this is the diagram showing selective pressure impression theory. Here the area of tissue contacted by the tray is recorded under pressure and the tissues not contacted by the tray are recorded in the state of rest. Okay, here the pressure is applied and here it is recorded in a state of rest. So, the relief areas of the maxilla are incisive papilla and mid parietal raphe, and the relieving areas of the mandible are thrust of the residual alveolar ridge, mental foramen of the severely resorbed ridges, and genial tubercle of severely resorbed ridges. Okay. Okay, we have already discussed various anatomic landmarks of maxilla and mandible in detail. You can watch that video also. Okay. So, here. This picture shows that in the first picture, it shows the technique is preferably made with low viscosity impression materials such as zinc oxide eugenol, impression paste to light body elastomer. And the resulting impression in the supporting areas is only 0.25 mm and it is called a wash impression. So, this type of impression is called as wash impression. And here, the uh, wash impression is that this arrow. Mark which showing the transparent layer indicates the impression material is just 0.25 mm thick and that the border molding is accurately represents the physiological anatomy of the silicus. And in this picture, it shows spacer adaptation of the um, uh, spacer adaptation for the monophase impression material. And uh, notice that the extra layer of the relief wax is added to accommodate monophase impression material. So, here it is the use of medium body elastoma uh, for this type of trays. Okay. And in such cases, a uniform layer of spacer should be added along with the relief wax to accommodate the flow of the material. Here, the selective pressure is provided by the difference in thickness of viscoelastic material. So, that is the this picture. It shows the border molding done with medium viscosity impression material. Here, the border molding is done with medium viscosity impression material. Okay. And uh, finally, the summary of the techniques, uh, mucostatic, mucocompressive and selective pressure impression theories. So next uh, technique that is the myostatic impression technique. It was put forward by Fresh, John P. Fresh. This technique begins with recording an overextension impression and then marking the muscle attachments. In order to record the myostatic outline, the special trays are fabricated 2 mm short of the muscle attachments and the periphery of the impression is pressed with medium viscosity impression material. 
Okay, as we already said. And the border bonding or peripheral tracing can be defined as the shaping of borders of impression tray to conform accurately to vestibular areas and the borders here. Okay. So that is about the myostatic impression technique. It was put forward by John P. Frush. So here the border molding is done with medium viscosity impression material. Okay. And the various materials used for peripheral tracing are low fusing impression compound that is um, preferred. And he, he medium body elastomer is also preferred. Then heavy body elastomer and uh, putty elastomer is there. Okay. And the impression ta technique taught in most dental colleges is the combination of flexible pressure and myostatic theories of impression making. And coming to the last impression technique that is dynamic impression theory. It was put forward by Chase. Here, he used autopolymerizing resin to record the impression. With the advancement in materials, the soft liners are extensively used for making the impression. And according to this theory, a perfect physiological impression is created by a slow molding material over weeks of use. And the final tissue contours are reproduced by hard drill line in the lab. And that is all about the Impression theories. That's all about for today's video. And in the next lecture, we will discuss various principles and objectives of impression making. Thanks for watching. And please do subscribe for more videos.